Yo, what up? It's Roger from Mass Gorilla. My guy. The most cloudless podcast in Los Angeles. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel for right. interviews with your favorite emerging artists. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Mass Gorilla. And on this video, leave a comment below of who you want to see on the podcast next. Today, we're here with Omen. Yes, sir, Roger. What's up, dude? What's up? It's been a long you? time in the making. Yeah, I mean, everything falls into place eventually, right? In its own way. In the way it's supposed to, you know, patience is key. Yeah, because so we did a text interview on Mascarella, the website, yep. about probably over a year ago at this yeah, point. Yeah, I'd say it's right about a year. Honestly, yeah, a little over a year, maybe a year and a few months. Yeah, so we're back at it again a year later. And look at it now. It's not text. It's not emails. It's, you know what I'm saying? I really like to see Mascarella doing this. I Dude, really do. Thank you. I really thank do. You. So where'd you come in from today? I came in from home. Parts unknown still. Parts unknown. So you don't, you still, just like the text interview. Just like the text interview. It's somewhere out there. It was a little bit of a drive. <laughs> it was a drive. So in Parts Unknown, what was it like growing up out there, a drive away? Everything was great. Um, I mean, but I'm not one to complain. You know what I mean? Um, when I was really young, I was adopted when I was like one, two years old, something like that. But, um, you know, I'm actually originally born in Ohio. I'll okay. at least say that. I'm born in Ohio. You know, so that's Midwest or whatever, but <clears throat> from Lorraine. And um, when I came out here, you know, I didn't even know I came out here. I was so young. You know what I mean? A year and a half, two years old, mm -hmm. like, wasn't really, like, cognitive like that. You know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, I'm from Southern California. Right. You know what I mean? So were you adopted and then you came out of here or were you adopted? Do you know any of those details were you adopted when you were like pretty much just born or? I say adopted to make it simple. It's a little more complicated than that based on my mom. You know what I mean? What she had to do. I'm one of four siblings. Okay. You know what I mean? But I'm the only one not in the family. Okay. I'm, I'm the third child. So what's the story there? The story there is is I don't know is is difficult for me to feel comfortable explaining it because I am the only one out of the loop. If that makes sense, you know what mm -hmm. I mean. My mom passed away in um, November last year. Oh wow! So I'm sorry to hear that. All good, you know. Um, it is what it is, but you know, w even with that being said, it's like you know. The big reason that uh, I came into a new family was because my father wasn't there. She was doing her own thing. You know, my grandma couldn't take care of me type thing. Hmm. You know what I mean? And it was just, it was timing. It was all timing. You know what I mean? I don't feel alienated or anything like that. But, you know, at the same time, it all comes back to to that. When I think about... Like you were asking earlier, when I think about how was it growing up here, you know, how do I feel? It's it's a more complicated question for me because it's, you know, I could have been somewhere else. I could have done something else. I could have been somebody else as far as I'm concerned, you know what I mean? But with that being said, I really appreciate being able to grow up in Southern California. Right. You know what I mean? And, and really uh, just take advantage of that, you know what I'm saying? Instead of being in Ohio. Right. Just take advantage of that. Like, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, not to pry, but, you know, it sounds like... No worries. When you were born, you were in a different situation, and your mom saw it best that, you know, she took you along. My my grandma was the one that made the call, and my mom never forgave her for it. Mm. But still, you know what I mean? So She, do she you did what she thought she had to do. So do you know anything about your birth parents or? A little bit. Um, my pops is just real. I don't know him like that at all. I just know his name. You know what I mean? And um, my mom had always told me, if you ever want to meet him, just tell me. If you ever want to call him, just tell me. 
you know, and I'll connect you guys or whatever. This, but I'm not interested in that. You know, I'm not looking for that. I don't need that. Yeah. Okay. So, how old are you at this point? Twenty three. Okay. Right. I mean, you're doing your own thing now. You're grown. Exactly. You're this is all very this is successful all, in your own right. You know. You know? Yeah. It's, it's not something to hold on to forever. Mm. You know, it was when I used to be in school and shit. You know, English class was like always my escape. You know, I always, as dumb as it sounds, as corny as it sounds, like I never even realized it as a kid, but I was always that kid in English class writing essays about my family that could have been. My mom, where is she? You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? You know, like I was always that kid just writing essays. I wouldn't talk about it, but when they would say, you know, write about this, write about that, I would finally feel like I could express myself about that. And I was so wrapped up in that when I was younger and I took it so personally, you know what I'm saying? That I really feel like when she passed away, it was just as much a release, you know, trying to be mature and trying to learn how to let go as it, as it is, as it is a loss, Mm. you know what I mean? It's literally like, it's both ways. It feels, it's a relief because it's like, I don't have to chase it anymore, right? But at the same time, it's obviously a loss, you know? It's obviously my mom, you know? It's obviously, of course, how anybody would feel about it, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm still working on how to feel about that type of shit. But it sounds like with her passing, that kind of closed the chapter on that. Yeah, in a certain type of way, it did. In a certain type of way, it made it a... more complicated too when we were on, on tour um we were driving from detroit to boston you go straight through ohio and coincidentally enough my family was like literally 15 20 minutes off the uh interstate you know what i mean and um thankfully everybody that was with me was totally cool with it. we had a little bit of time and i got to go see My little brother, my older sister, and my oldest brother's at work. You know what I mean? So I didn't get to see him, but it was all good. But we went through. It was just something that, you know, to not not just to be able to see them, but to be able to do it because of music. Mm -hmm. To be able to do it because of this thing that I've tried my best to push myself, you know, independently and, and this and that. It was, like, really nice, you know what I'm saying? Wait, so she, when you were one and a half, she left with you to come out to California? No, no, no. Uh, no, my mom stayed in Ohio. Oh. Yeah, oh, I came where, out here by myself. When you were one and a half? One and a half, two. With who? I lived with, um, I believe it's my mom's uncle. Oh, I okay. believe. Okay. Yeah, like it wasn't ever anything that we talked about it was never like that you know what i mean they always wanted me to feel part of the family and i appreciate that and respect that you know what i'm saying okay so they as all far stayed as in I'm ohio concerned, as far as i'm concerned i'll always call my mom's uncle dad okay. i'll always call his wife mom okay okay you know what i mean i always will do that out of respect and out of appreciation because that's what they were for me you know they did their best to make me feel involved you know what i'm saying because you were saying how old were you when you were writing an english class about this all the time so i mean since since essay started what is that second third fourth grade yeah probably so all the way through high school so you already knew when you were young of this scenario i knew i figured it out it was weird i figured out in first grade how'd that happen just randomly uh Connecting the dots, and it sounds stupid, but you know, you gotta understand. I was in first grade, I'm six years old, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, you know, one day, I don't know how it, it triggered in my head, but one day I was like, hey, I was like, how come we have different last names, dad? Right. You know what I'm saying? How come I got a different last name than you and mom? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and he's like, oh, you're named after your grandpa, which wasn't a lie. You know what I'm saying? But he was trying to, and I can understand he was trying to protect me in certain ways. He was trying to, you know, not make me feel distant. He was trying to, you know what I'm saying? So I I respect that. I appreciate that. But I just noticed it from something simple like that. 
as obvious as that is you know what i mean yeah you know because it's really interesting when we did the text interview you didn't want to give any like background information and you still don't want to say where you live now and at first you know as an interviewer kind of roll my eyes like oh he's just trying to create a mysterious persona around him but there's actually a reason and it's heavy and it all makes sense yeah yeah there's there's a it's a big reason to me because it's not about oh boohoo you know what Mm -hmm. i mean and i don't i don't have the hardest life ever I really don't. I know there's there's blind and, and, and deaf kids out there, bro. Like, no disrespect at all. You know what I mean? No, there's yeah, there's right. people going through some shit out right. there, bro. Homeless kids with homeless parents. Like, there's people going through some shit out there. So, But I also don't want to come off, you know, off the top like, oh, oh. Right. No, well, I you think that's, that's a part of the process of letting go is to right. kind of be like, you know what? Some people have it harder than me. And yeah, I wasn't, you know, the, I have it hard, you know, not to like take away from it, but you know, you let go of it and you know, you just realize that's part of life. Everyone right. has their own thing that they have to deal with, but that's a heavy thing. So growing up in the Los Angeles area, right? Close how enough. is it living with, you know, your mom and your dad what do you call them yeah so like how was that like what were they doing for a living what was life like um they're both from the east coasters slash south okay like my mom's from i think uh you know mama i live with right it's in north carolina father i live with is from also i think ohio you know what i'm saying uh, right like i right, said i think right. she's, i think he's my mom's uncle or something like that right um so they have i don't know how to explain this but like like not everyone's gonna understand this but there's like literally a certain type of way they are over there obviously no respect in ohio yeah in ohio and in north carolina in the south and and in the midwest and you know they came to california where everything is is so much more you know it's more populated people are more talkative in different ways i don't know how to explain that you know what i mean but Growing up with them was cool. I mean, as a kid, I was always upset or I I didn't like it. I was, oh, you know, I was making excuses. I was making excuses. Oh, you're not my dad. You're not my mm-hmm. mom. Like, you know what I mean? As kids will do. Were you the only were you the only child living in that house? No, I have an older sister. Um, she's 12 years older than me, though. So okay. I basically was. When I was six, she was 18. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? We didn't talk or get along about anything obviously a child and i have two older brothers too um one passed away marquo and then uh keila but they're they're older they're like because my pops that i live with is like 60 he's 60 this year okay yeah so it's like even that in itself is just kind of a weird gap, a weird distance. Right. That was probably one of the pieces you put together. Yeah. Like you were saying, it's like, oh, wait, my dad is a little bit older than the other kids' dads. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's different. It's different. You know what I mean? When you have a, you know, obviously, if my dad's 20 years older than your dad, then he's 20 years further along in life. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, it, and it is what it is. You know, it's like, uh, like I already said. I appreciate what they try to do for me. I appreciate what they did do for me. I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, the effort that they could put in, you know, because they didn't have to. Huh. So I, I have nothing to complain about. So at what age did you kind of, because you said you were angry. Yeah, right. And, and saying, oh, you're not my dad. So how old were you when you kind of came to that realization of, oh, wait, these are just, these are fucking people with their own problems and they took me on. And right. It sounds like you grew really the respect them and, when was that? I feel like I've always kind of respected that in a certain way. Um, but answering your question, because you're right. You know, when I was really, really young, you know, going through, you know, preteens, early teens, blah, 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 like I was angry. You know what I'm saying? I was upset. I did make excuses. So I say probably around 18, I really did start to understand 17, 16. Like, I really just start to understand because I met my mom for the first time when I was 14. Okay. Uh, on Thanksgiving. 
and then um was that in ohio yeah i went back there you know and 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 it was good but um on thanksgiving day she did some stupid shit she shouldn't have done you know i love you you know what i'm saying i love her you know what i'm saying um but she did some shit she shouldn't have done and she got locked up again mm. on thanksgiving you know and it was just like so i just went back back here you had you been saying? speaking to her before that or were you guys keeping in touch or how'd that happen that you ended up in ohio for thanksgiving we didn't keep in touch too often we kind of did but the only reason we didn't was because of me to be honest mm. yeah because you were an angry kid and you were like yeah exactly, why the fuck exactly. am i here why uh, am i not with my uh, why am i not with you uh you don't want me uh yeah so no. how old yeah. are her other children are they uh, around the same age as you or my oldest sister i want to guess is maybe like 28 29 okay my older brother is probably about 25 so it's, so it's like way closer he's close yeah and then my my younger brother i think he's around 16 15 so 17. Have, so you go for thanksgiving did you keep in touch with them after or yeah kind of i mean yeah. as much as i wanted to you know like i like i said earlier it's it's about you know i don't want my life to be that I don't want my life to be a long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be wrapped up in, in all that shit. And that, I, you know, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm saying like that's what I chose. I, I distanced myself a lot from everybody because it, it's difficult dealing with shit like that. You know, what I'm saying it's difficult being so far away and caring about somebody, right? Yeah, and you're a 13 year old kid trying to put the pieces together, right? You know, and even now. You know, even now, even last year, even when I was 22, 21, 20, I didn't talk to her. You know, I don't, I don't talk to any of them. I don't talk to anybody. I really don't. Besides my friends that I see every day, you know what I mean? Like, my friends are very important to me because they are my family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they really are. Sounds extra, but it's just like, I love to get up every day. Every day I wake up, get on my phone, text him and them, what's the play? What are we doing, you know? Yeah. And we'll come over, bro. We'll fucking, we'll cook on the grill. Cook some cook some burgers, some steaks or whatever on the grill, bro. Fucking smoke in the backyard. Like, I love doing that every day. I live for that shit. It's nothing, but I live for that shit. That shit is so important to me because it's like, I understand that they are there. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah not not that they're trying to be there not that they're being you know it's no, not dramatic, I mean, but no, it's, it's not appreciated. cliche but it's appreciated kind of like the old the corny saying is friends or family that you choose exactly yeah. exactly that's how i feel about it honestly so you were on the road you happen to be driving through ohio yeah and your dad calls you no, no, no. Well, we were driving through um, because obviously, you know, I already knew my mom had passed away in November. We were driving through, you know, oh, okay. you literally see between Detroit and Boston driving through that highway. You literally see the rain on, on the freeway signs. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm like, that's the city I was born in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's so far from home. So I was like, hey, let's just stop real quick, you know? And that was that. I, I um hit up my sister on Facebook or something like that. So, I mean, were they, was it. were they happy to see you? I'm sure they yeah. were proud. I was happy to see them. They were happy to see me. Everything's, you know, everything's cool. Tight. They're proud. I mean, I'm proud of them just as much, you know? It's like, it just is. I don't know. You talk about, you know, people being, like, proud and stuff like that. Like, I get it, you know. I make music now, right? And now people listen to my stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, so there's all this justification. You know, I've always been proud of myself for doing what I want to do. So I went back and read that text interview. 
And you said one of your earliest music experiences was doing karaoke when you were four. Yeah, that was when I was a really, really, really little kid. I don't even know what that was, to be honest. I can barely remember it, but it was, I don't know. It's just funny thinking about it, honestly. Yeah. You know, uh, I didn't even know uh, really what I was doing. I just kind of got, like, my dad told me, hey, grab the microphone. Like, he was, you know, he was playing. He was drunk, so he was chilling. No. And, I, and I just grabbed it, and I just started, uh, I can't even remember what song it was, but I started rapping this song that I hear on the radio, like, every day type thing, because my dad always listens to radio, you know, 92.3. Fucking, I just, I just started going, and then the DJ fucking lined me up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The DJ lined me up, and I just kept going. Everybody was getting all hypey, like people do for kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was cool. But I, I, even at that, I never thought anything of it. Like after that, I just went back inside and played my Game Boy. Right. Pokemon. Pokemon. What's that? That, that is that like Pokemon Red or Blue? That's, that's I mean, definitely that's, red, red and yellow, bro. Oh, yellow. Red okay. and yellow, bro. Because that's 1999. So. Uh, I think I had blue back in the day. My brother had red. Blue was good. Blue was good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like what, you were an angry kid. Were you listening to like hardcore music or like what was your outlet? You, you were saying you were writing, but what kind of music were you listening to? What was going on at that time in your life, like middle school, early high school? Hmm. Okay, middle school and early high school. I started playing guitar when I was nine. So that's fourth grade, right? Oh, okay. Uh, I played classical music for about a year or two. Was that in school or? No, it was just on the side for me. Mm. Like I just genuinely like guitar. One of my biggest inspirations for music is um, that character from the Dexter's Laboratory shorts. Um, They had the, the Justice Friends or something like that, bro. Right? And there's this dude Valhalla with the long blonde hair and the flying V. Okay. He was one of my biggest inspirations. He's literally the reason I wanted guitar so bad when I was a kid, but it stuck with me longer than that, you know? I started playing guitar when I was fourth grade. So when you say classical, you're talking classic rock? No, like um, Beethoven, Mozart. I didn't even know you could play on the guitar. Yeah. If you got one right now, I'll play it. Someone get a guitar right now. I'm not that good, but hey, we'll we got a, we got a tiny guitar that's perfect for exactly what you're gonna go for. A tiny perfect guitar. Yeah, what do they call it again? It's uh, it's like I don't know. It's a fa- it's like a fucking famous brand or something. What like a fucking a Taylor? Yeah, is that what it's called? Like a mini Taylor? It's a Taylor for real? Yeah. Oh shit! It's I an mean, honor. <laughs> Thank you to our producer, Lily, for bringing in this mini teller. And I have no idea how classical music sounds on guitar, so we're going to... I'm not going to play no classical music. I need to hear some classical music. I really sorry, bro. <laughs> okay. I really haven't played guitar in a fucking minute. This shit is mini, yeah, but it's comfy. But it's weird to me. I don't it's the perfect how at it's so home mini, guitar. It really fits. Yeah, it's just perfectly engineered for sitting on the couch or in a podcast studio and playing the guitar. Exactly. There we go. You just blew my mind. I guess. Hand that off to me. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna do the most with that right now. I haven't touched a guitar in a little bit, but um, you know, you had some solid finger picking going on. A little tiny bit, huh? Huh. Fucking. Uh, I used to love playing guitar. Uh, that was actually my actual dream as a kid. I wanted to be a guitar player in a band and this and that. And that's kind of where I was getting to. It is like. Um, so I started in fourth grade playing guitar. You talked about middle school, high school. You know, how did I? do with my anger and this and that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be a part of a band, you know what I mean? And I played guitar for a long time. In middle school especially, I was always, you know, bring, I would bring my amp to school. I would walk to school with my fucking amp, 
or take the bus with my amp and my guitar case and and at lunch I would I would set up my shit fucking in like a corner and just play music with an electric guitar? Yes. So were you like the cool kid with the guitar or nah, were you like you were I wouldn't getting say bullied I would, like I wouldn't the weird say I was, kid bringing the amp to school? I wouldn't say I was cool, but I wouldn't say I was corny. I was just doing my thing. You know what I mean? Okay. Like People kind of thought I was cool because especially in middle school, like not too, too many people play guitar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people kind of thought it was cool. People kind of appreciated. But even then, like, I just I just really liked to play guitar back in the day, bro. I really did. And it was always my dream to be in a band. But, you know, in high school, um, you know, we had a little band situation going. We could not find a vocalist. Mm. You know, uh, Suicide Silence actually went to my high school. Really? Yeah, three or four years before I did. So now people Wild, can just right? search to see where you're from. Yeah, they'll try to figure it out. Uh, where are you from? Come on. Where am I from? Yeah, come say, on. It, say it. Oh, come on. Just let them. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. So fucking Suicide Silence. So like, yeah. were they one of the bands that you, like all the kids in your school must have all the, looked all up the to original, them? All the original members. Yeah, exactly. So everybody looked up to them. You know what I mean? Not just in my high school, but in my in my city, in my area. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, people wouldn't understand, but that shit was so big at the time. And even I didn't understand for how off-brand, like, not off-brand, but how off, like, off-topic, off-focus Death Court was right. um, in 2010, 2011. You know what I mean? It, 2012. It was like, it was so big there, though. It was like, That's everybody crazy. appreciated it. Everybody fucked with it. Everybody liked it. You know what I mean? It was a really big deal. And, you know, we could never find a vocalist. So eventually I did my best to fill that void. You know what I'm saying? So and you're that playing that was the guitar how I got and you're into, singing. That's how, no, I, I used to write all the guitar. I used to write all the guitar. Okay. I used to write all the bass. And I would teach it to other people. Wow. And then I would do the vocals. That's crazy. Yeah. What was the name of that band? Is that stuff still out there on the internet somewhere? It's still out there somewhere. You're going to have to, the, they're going to have to find it themselves. There's going to be a lot of uh, doing some research after yeah, this let, interview. Let them, let them go. Let them go. So is that what you were into? Kind of that, you know, like Suicide Silence stuff? Or were you into other stuff growing up? Or? I was into like... I mean, like, I would say the most critical timing for me in music in a certain type of way is kind of high school for that type of shit. You know, I was really into, like, strictly, like, I was, like, almost like a metalhead, like, you know, like a dick. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. what's this singing stuff? Oh, uh, I can't. I can't handle it. You know what I mean? You hated yeah. anything. It had to scream. That was on it the had radio. to blast the beat. It had to, oh, yeah. What were like the popular I mean, I still hate bands? On the radio. What were the bands that kids liked in high school that you were like, oh, they like uh, Rancid, those uh, fucking posers? Uh, uh, look, I don't worry about what I don't like. I worry about what okay. I do like. Okay. You know? Fucking, I, I fucked with Suicide Silence. Chelsea Green was my favorite band for a long time. You know, when they came out with Desolation of Eden, fucking Carnifex, Whitechapel, mm. fucking, I just liked heavy shit back in the day, yeah. and, you know, so I used to do the real, like, screaming, screaming shit, you know what I mean? The high shit, the low gutturals and shit. You like, do those, like, uh, what are they called, like, squeals? Oh, what's, like, oh, the yeah. actual name yeah, for it? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you could do a pig squeal, like, what, inhale and shit, but you could do a guttural, like, low and kind of make it sound similar, sound better, low-key to me. But it's, like, I used to be into, like, all that shit, like, super heavy. And mm -hmm. long story short is, you know, so that was how I channeled my anger and, and all that, you know. But it got to a point where it was, like, I'm tired of depending on three or four other people to come through or to follow through right. or to follow up. And I was, like, you know. And uh, I fell out of music for about a year or two. You know, I tried to, I tried to go to school and dropped out. You know what I'm saying? I tried to go to college and dropped out. I tried to get a job, you know, and that was fine. You know, just fine, though. Like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But it was like after that, you know, it was sometime in 2014. <clears throat> Not the most OG SoundCloud head ever, okay? Because I used to be really into metal. Mm -hmm. But in 2014, when I I heard um, uh, I heard Chris Travis, uh, 9K Freestyle in like 2014, mm 
And I was like, damn, this is actually kind of tight. You know, and I looked into him, found out he was part of a little group, right? And then uh, Rotten by Bones is the first album I ever listened to on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? Wow. Which isn't old. I know it's not the most OG shit, you know what I'm saying? But still, like, that's what it was for me. Then I went back and did my research because it was like, for me, as a kid and shit, I mean, I kind of liked rap back in the day. I liked the older school shit. I liked the this and that. But, you know, the 2000s, early 2000, 2000 to 2006 with... Yeah, you weren't into the uh, bling bling era. It was a little much. You weren't into the big chains. I ha- I didn't have none. Right. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have none where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? How we grew up. Like, none of us. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, how am I supposed to appreciate it? Mm-hmm. Not saying, not hating on it. But for real, it's like, how am I supposed to see myself in this? I mean, I guess there's always that ambition, right? Like, oh, well, I want, I want the, I want the nice car. I want the big chain. I want the, you know, of course there's that ambition, but, you know, I have that aside for music, you know what I mean? I don't need to listen to music to inspire me to just want more, to do more, to be more, you know what I mean? I can do that myself, you know what I'm saying, in my own way. So, you know, like I'm saying, not even trying to hit on it, but when I heard about, you know, Sesha Water Boys way back in the day, aka four years ago, yeah, <laughs> fucking, it was just really dope to me because on top of the music they were doing, I was like, they're really just doing this. You know, fucking Elliot's out there, bro, fucking really pushing these boys, bro. And they're all just, it didn't even make sense, bro. Like, from a first glance, it didn't even make sense. I'm like, what do you mean these guys don't have this? What do you mean these guys don't have that? Because as a as somebody in bands, labels, and all that shit is super normal. Right. Right? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like I was like, how are they really pushing it this far? You know what I'm saying? I was just mind blown. And it was like, and that brought that spark back to me. And that brought that inspiration back to me to make music again. Because I was like, you know, these guys are just out here doing it themselves, doing whatever they want. You know what I mean? And it's just like so 2014 how old are you what's what are you 19 uh, so if i'm 23 yeah, yeah 19. you're 19 so mm-hmm. where where were you working at the time i was working at a pizza place and an amazon warehouse at the same time how is the amazon warehouse because nowadays you hear a lot of bad <laughs> stories about it. i don't know what they're like nowadays i haven't worked in two years but was it like Three good years. was it normal that yeah, is a fucking warehouse. You move boxes. Because, you, you know, know, you like read these stories now and they're crazy. Okay, but anyway. I haven't read, the, I haven't read the stories. I used to either, I used to empty trucks or I used to unpack boxes one or two. And how long were you in college? College, about one semester. I made it through because I used to play uh, volleyball in high school. So did I. You did? Yeah. Real. You I played volleyball. A, I was an outside hitter. Oh, you were left. Yeah, I was on the left side. Okay. I was an oppo uh, in high school, but I was also like, you know, I had that outside aspiration, there you know what I'm saying? Like everybody, you know uh. what I'm saying? Anybody who's anybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is some real deep volleyball Whoever talk knows. going on. In the we're gonna, pe- we're gonna pepper later, bro. You got me oh fucked my up. God. I'm trying to Do I have a volleyball somewhere? We got the fucking pepper. I haven't even heard that word. Come in, like, on, bro. <laughs> incredible we well, you know but that's actually I used interesting to love that shit i so, started uh, i coached volleyball actually oh really for what like a youth league no for a high school when i was 18 really yeah i coached at a high school when i was 18 that's pretty crazy yeah i had, so, my, I had my own team like to myself like it was my team so like, i coached a freshman team for girls the jv team for boys and assisted for the uh varsity team for how, girls how did that come together I played volleyball, right? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So wait, so you went to you went to college for volleyball? I w- didn't go to college for volleyball, but, but I played. did play volleyball at the college that I went to. Does that is make it like sense? A, I'm saying I didn't get a scholarship, or right? Like that. Is it like a university? I didn't or? start playing volleyball till I was 17, like on some random shit. Because I used to TA in high school. I TA'd for the F class. You know what I mean? What's and, that? Um, <clears throat> So TA teaches assistant. Well, right, but what's the, the uh, so we the F class? What I'm trying to say, my bad, uh, is a, a PE physical education. You know that we did something at my high school where basically anybody with a D or lower 
goes into this class and mm-hmm. all you have to do is fucking walk miles every day okay That's yeah basically yeah, yeah. All it was, yeah, you know yeah okay right but i ta'd for that class but the teacher that i ta'd for in that class that was the easiest class i ever had bro every day i would go in and i would just watch annoying kids walk laps it's, it's is that cool. a normal thing that kids do and you you were being a teacher's assistant while you were in high school is that a normal thing out here um and were you getting paid? No, or no, like no. you're getting a credit. You don't get paid, you get credit. You're getting credit. You get okay. credits okay. And, you, and you get you know, you get to say you were a TA. Like right. not even it, it's about the it's about the fact that it's not hard work. You know, you gotta, it's a free know, class. You gotta do what you gotta do, bro. I slept through school. I slept through school. Just like slept through it. First, second, third period, fourth period. We just sleeping in class, like each oh, yeah. class Every you go day. in, you fall asleep. Every single day. Listening to Suicide Silence. Yeah. Being a TA, yep. playing volleyball. Well, I didn't start playing volleyball, right. like I said, till junior year, senior year. Uh, junior year, uh, I started playing because, like I was saying, I was uh, doing this F class or whatever. Mm. But it was for it was for not just a coach, but a PE teacher and a, and, a, and a person that I actually genuinely appreciated. You know what I mean? Because you know, like we talked about earlier, I went through a lot in high school. Mm. You know, personally. It wasn't like ever like that dramatic, but it was like, you know, so I appreciated uh, the good relationships I could come by. Right. And he's like, he would always tell me, he's like, oh, you're kind of tall. You're kind of, you're kind of thin. You should play volleyball. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, I actually coach volleyball after school. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm like, bro, I'm like volleyball. I'm like, are you serious? Like rocket power? Like, are you serious? (laughs) You know what I mean? And I never took it seriously for like, but. But I did this TA thing for like six months, bro. And like four months in, I'm finally like, okay, I'll come after school. I'll see what's up. Because what? You're like six one, six two. Yeah, about that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, you know what I'm saying? So, and then I finally go in. And, you know, I didn't fit in. I wasn't good at it. You know, I was I was 17. You know I mean? I'm like late, late behind the curve. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It is what it is. But I didn't fit in. I wasn't good at it. But... I've always loved games. Like, I love video games. You know what I'm saying? I've always loved challenge. I've always loved pushing myself in certain ways. And I've always loved, especially when I could put it upon myself to be responsible and put it up upon myself to, you know, have a goal. You know what I mean? It distracts me from all the other bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, you know what? And I just kept going back. It wasn't even it wasn't even that I decided I was going to do it the first day or the second day or the third day. I just kept going back because it was like, what am I going to do after school? You know, that was after our bands and stuff. It was like, I, like I said, I right. got sick of waiting for people and doing this and that. I was like, oh, I'm going to just go do my own thing. You know, I can just go by myself. I can just go play volleyball or whatever. So that was cool for me. So you played like two seasons in high school. Yeah. And somehow literally ended up being a coach, 18. That's so crazy. Yeah, it went that well, huh? And then... We were uh, 15-0 my senior year, baby. Wow. So what's that? Were you guys like... uh, You guys win a championship or something? Uh, We were the first team actually to get a banner for volleyball at my high school. And my high school has been open since like 1970. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal. Not that serious though. It was high school. You know what I mean? But still, it was like, you know, we went 15-0. It was like... It was cool. Yeah, because I've never for, been a part of something like that. I've I've never been into sports. My dad tried to get me to play football, basketball. No, no, no. Did like you grow up I'm skating at all or Hell yeah, I love to skate. Okay. I skated to school every day. Uh middle school, uh sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. That's where I met some of my best friends to this yeah. day. And that's obviously more of a solo I mean you hang out with people, but everything's on your yeah, own shoulders. Exactly. You're gonna teach yourself this trick, but for volleyball, you're one of six people on the court right gotta rely on other people right to volley the fucking ball to you, you so you can hit that. it you know you have yeah. to learn that you know I, mean, I was always an introvert you know what i'm saying i was always always having and still am you know i just but it was like you had to learn you know and that was a good way for me to really get used to interacting with people and being around people and understanding people mm-hmm. because it's like we all have our own limitations we all have our own you know, this and that. And it's like, you know, you start to learn to accept things in certain ways. Yeah. Like, maybe you're short. Maybe I'm tall. You know? So I'm here, you're there. 
Like, this is how it is. Hey, maybe you're faster than me. Maybe I'm slower than you. So I'm here, you're there. Like, that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. Sports, I was never really big into, but volleyball, for some reason, just really stuck with me. And I thought I was going to fuck with it for a long time, and I didn't. I mean, are you, do you still play a little bit nah. recreationally, hit the nope. beach? Never. Yeah, I should. I should. I really should. Dude, let me know. Let's play some two on twos. You're not even done, I've, bro. I was like literally just talking to somebody. I went home to Long Beach, New York. And so where I'm from, volleyball was like the coolest sport because we right. live on the beach and no one played football. Everyone played volleyball on the beach. Exactly. So. But I was saying, damn, like, no, like, who the fuck knows anyone out here who plays volleyball? And now uh, a couple of days later, dude, we got to, you know, let's, we, do let's fucking hit the beach. But let's anyway, do something, bro. I'm super down. So you go to college. Like, were you thinking, oh, I'm going to major in something or kind of you were figuring it out I along the way? didn't think anything of it, bro. I just did what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to what, you know, I slept through fucking high school fucking got through with a C average, you know, made it work. You know what I'm saying? Did do my homework, just did decent on tests. Like, and then I went to went to college just because I'm supposed to, and I'm supposed to get a piece of paper that lets me do whatever, whatever. And it was like, it's obvious why I lost interest. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So you leave college coincidentally. Mm -hmm. Well, you work a couple of jobs, but all around the same time where this current underground scene is developing. So right, are you exactly were was, you was weird, yeah. were you going to a lot of those first ses shows when they used to play at like not real venues and you would have to <clears throat> No, I wasn't even around for that shit. Fucking I wish I was to be honest. But for like the warehouse um, days. The first shows I went to f uh with all that was like the uh the House of Blues shows. Okay. I went wow. to I went to both of the House of Blues shows. Fucking uh you know that was dope because that was like when they were kind of on that cusp too of really yeah of really like making that impact because mascarilla did one of their first legitimate shows that were in their own warehouse shows and right. that's the show that people are probably sick of me bringing up but it was my first show I ever through and they opened up for odd future right um, but then after that is when they started doing those house of blue shows mm -hmm. which is interesting is because if you remember those House of Blues shows, like they would come on, but before they would come on, they would have like three underground rappers come yeah, on before. Yeah, them. I remember Roz and Smurf. Yeah. Uh, the second one I saw it was Roz, Smurf. I think that I think it was just them. I might be tripping. There might have been one more there person. Was, I feel like it was always three people. Always was three. it someone? Is Smurf from Memphis? Yeah. Was it someone else from Memphis? <sighs> It doesn't matter. No, nah, but I can't remember. So, so not only are you seeing such how Warrior Boys, but you're seeing these guys before them who are, you know, way closer to. Yeah, yeah. They're way more accessible. So that must have been inspiring to be like, oh wait, it's not only like these guys who are killing it; they're in the cusp. No, exactly. there's, there's this whole there's other so scene. Many, there's so many people. Exactly. You know, right. I learned that quickly because, um, you know, Dylan Ross. You know, I understand, obviously, he's part of special, or he was part right, of special was, boys at that was, time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We <laughs> stopped for you fucking not. Uh, <laughs> 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 fucking, but at that time, bro, when he dropped uh, Light Shows Darkness with Perp Dog, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is a big reason why I'm a huge Perp Dog fan. Dude, shout out Perp day. Dog. I saw shout you put out that Perp photo Dog. with him. He's the unsung hero He's of a Underground. fucking legend. There's a few He's producers, a legend, you know, that bro. me and other people, we always reference of, oh, they, but fucking Perp Dog is right up there with them. He is. Yeah. He's, He's what? I think double or triple platinum now or something like that? He did. We made it. He did, the Soldier Boy it. song. He did, we made it. And then Drake remixed that, that it. That one song he made with Rob Stone, that Show Bill song he made with Rob Stone, is like double or triple oh, platinum. Fuck, or something I like completely that. forgot he did that song. Shit's God stupid. Damn. Bitch, yeah, he's you know? like, he's a, he's a multi platinum exactly. record producer, let alone all the underground you know? classics he did. Right. And it shows how genuine he is, though, because like he still comes to me like, like I'm a normal person. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, we message each other every few days. You know what I'm saying? He's sending me shit. I'm sending him He's shit. He's from he still upstate wants to New York, right? Me, you know? Yeah. You so know? what? I mean, he must be killing it. Like, Yeah. He's he's chilling. Yeah. 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 It's so like, it's was, dope. Was uh, he out here when you guys linked up? Uh, yeah. Fucking, um, he came 
uh, to that little um, show on Huntington Beach. The oh, okay. One, the, okay. One Eddie, the one Eddie and um, Hotspot through. Shit, dude, you gotta. Once we wrap this, you gotta send me his number because we gotta get him on the podcast or uh, get him. But that, anyway, I'll, that'll be difficult, bro. He, he, know, he said maybe so, five words to me, bro. He's, he's, a, he's so a quiet reclusive. guy. He's yeah. a nice, he's, he's cool, bro. He's super cool. Yeah. But he's just doing his thing. So seeing yeah. Roz, seeing him, like, did you meet them? Like, how'd you get, like, so that's 2014. Right. How'd you get into this scene? What'd you do? You just started recording your own music or? Yeah. So, um, uh, 2014, end of the year, December, 2014, December 17th. I literally remember when it is because it's like literally that important to me, you know, um, December 17th, 2014, I started producing as Dreamwalker. That was like my little producer name. Right. And I started making beats and stuff. Because I didn't really know that much either, you know. I was just like, wow, like you said, you know. I see all these people, they're all doing this thing. Like, you know, I want to be a part of this. I think I have I have music or I have ideas or whatever, you know what I'm saying. And I did my thing. But, um, you know, it wasn't catching, obviously, the way that I had hoped for. Especially in the very beginning, you know. When you literally make an account. From scratch. I know you had this day too. You made an account from scratch. You had zero followers at one point in time. You mm -hmm. had absolutely no followers. You know, and I've never been the guy to be like, hey, check out my music. Hey, check exactly. out this song. Yeah. Hey, check this out. No, nah, I've never been that because I want people to stumble upon it and enjoy it, you know, naturally. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I also, while I was making those beats and stuff, I felt like, I wasn't fully expressing myself, you know what I mean? I was just mm. I was just so inspired, you know what I'm saying? So that was when in 2015 I started rapping. Like early 2015, like probably January, February, and I changed my whole name to Omen 13. Yeah, so what's the name mean? People I asked the fans to ask some questions and there's a lot right. of questions because no one knows anything about you. Right. But someone wanted to know if you're religious, if you were raised religious because the name Omen. Uh, What's I'm the not, answer to both those questions? I'm not religious. I did go to Christian school from kindergarten to fourth grade. Oh, okay. And I think that's a big reason I'm not religious anymore. Yeah. To be honest, it's really weird how counterproductive that was. But um, Omen isn't supposed to be... That's like the point. Honestly, you know, Omen 13 is like two things with um, bad connotations, right? But if you take it for face value, if you look it up, if you look into it or whatever, you can look at the dictionary definition. Omen is a divine, um, a divine happening. I can't think of the right words. Hmm. It's a divine event. Okay. Right. right. It can be good or bad. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be bad, but people give it that bad connotation because of the way it's been presented. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? 13 is the same way. 13 is considered unlucky. 13 is considered bad. 13 is considered this and that. In Western culture, but in Eastern culture, in a lot of religions in Eastern culture, meaning, you know, over in those countries, it's considered sacred. It's considered precious. It's considered special. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, um, regardless of how you look at me, regardless of how you want to approach me, like I've always felt like people will look at me and and give me that face value of nah, you know, yeah, not just what, just not fuck with me based on what, based on what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just giving me that negative value when in reality, if you just step back and just assess everything, like you would see. It's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad. It's like, I'm just me. like, And I'm really not that fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that weird. I'm not that mean. I'm not that dark. I'm not that, I'm not that bright. Like, I just am how I am and what I am as I move. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're it's actually... Like, if you can't see past the name, then I don't want you to listen to my music. Right. You know, if you're gonna look if you're just gonna go, oh, Omen thirteen, he thinks he's he thinks he's so dark, he thinks he's so you know what I mean? Right. I mean one of the more surprising parts, and I said this before we started filming, was you're actually a really nice person. Which yeah, I mean super. I 
I didn't think you were anything but that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, anyone with a following can kind of, you know, act like nah, a little bit of an asshole. You're telling you me know? it gets old, bro. You're, I live with Craig, <clears throat> Ghost, Peep, Brennan, Ned, all at the same time. Okay. Okay. Smooth. <laughs> okay. okay. Slow down. So, what the fuck? So, 2015 comes around. You're producing. Right. You eventually start rapping. You start yep. meeting these people. Yeah. How so did, yeah, how that whole. So 2015, I, I made a couple little tapes. Uh, always been a big fan of like obviously Sesh, Sesh Hard Boys in general, but um, Sesh producers, you know, Drip One Three Three, Drew the Architect. I used to just lease beats from him, bro. Mm. Just you know what I mean. Huge fan. Fucking still am. Um, and I used to make little tapes. I did little four song tapes. My goal is to do one little tape every month. Like that was my hustle. Yeah, you have a lot Back of projects in 2015. I looked it up online. Yeah, I have, I have like 350 songs so far. Whoa. I mean, you know, stay busy, but fucking, you know, after I made a couple of them, that was when Gus hit me up. So I have like. <coughs> 300 followers finally you know what i mean this is still Ooh. this is a couple months into 2015 yeah, this is this is probably maybe march 2015 probably around there give or take a month um but that's when people hit me up i had like 300 350 followers and he had like he had like 150 yeah you know what i mean it was like the most regular normal interaction but you know <clears throat> even to this day I'm not super like uh, I don't know how to explain it but the way Peep approached me it was just so it was re- it, like like even to this day I don't work with anybody I don't mm-hmm. work with people like often not because I don't want to not because I'm opposed to it but because you know like this is for me you know and if I invite you into that then that means something to me mm-hmm. you, under- you know what I'm saying so you know i mean but even at that time you know people hit me up in soundcloud messages you know what i mean like on some regular shit he was like hey you know i kind of like this song or i kind of like that song and and i checked out his shit and i was like that was back when he was rapping like you know i'm saying people people don't know about that shit i know it's so interesting he was so good at rapping like no bullshit but i was like no i focus some of your shit too you know and we that was when we made um you know in the bedroom I confess and like started working on he kept sending me tracks and I kept sending him shit. He was, he was still in New York at the time. Yeah, yeah, that was before he came out to Pasadena. Right, that's such an interesting thing. That I think underground rap fans are starting to learn about a little bit more is that Gus was a huge underground rap fan, right. and I've seen some of those messages, and right. I mean. He was like, he was in it. Mm-hmm. Like people think he just blew up out of nowhere, but he was like, oh yeah, people would definitely think that. I mean, I've it might be fucking extra to say, but I mean, I've been there since the beginning with him, you know. Yeah, yeah. and I've and I've seen how far he went, and and you know what I mean. Like, it's it's dope, it's dope, and I appreciate it. But it's like when you really see it from start to finish like that, it's like it's so inspiring it's so cool because the way he did it it was at least from my perspective it wasn't really ever on some extra shit Mm -mm. like he just hit me up i just hit him back we did a couple things you know this and that he's like hey i actually got a friend out there in california i might be coming out there soon you know and that was when he came to pasadena and shit like that yeah and in those early days too he was at least from what i've seen he was always hey i'm a fan of you it was right. he was always so you know yeah straight up straight, straight up, up nice like not putting on a character yeah and yeah so when you listen back to that project now what's it like three years later and everything that's transpired i mean based off everything that's transpired it's it's distant but it's close like it's hard to explain I really appreciate Pete, you know what I mean? And I didn't speak on it like a ton, a ton, a ton when when everything was going on because it's just like everybody's got their two cents, I guess, mm-hmm. at this point, right? Yeah. But, but people never understand, like, that was one of the most genuine relationships I ever made 
in SoundCloud because it was the beginning. Because nobody gave a fuck about me. And nobody gave a fuck about him at the time mm. either. You know, we were just, we just clicked and we were just friends. Like, for real. You know what I'm saying? And I always appreciate that because it was like when, it, when nobody really cared that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was cool with me. I was cool with him, you know? So, you know, he always had this personality of trying to be positive. At least that's how I feel. At least that's how I want to feel or whatever. I felt like he was always trying to be positive, you know. When I finally met him, we would go to McDonald's all the time. We would play the fucking uh, Monopoly at McDonald's, bro. That was our thing. And we would trade. I'd trade him the breakfast for the for the lunch. He'd give me the chicken sandwiches. I'd give him the McMuffins or the McGriddles or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know. Because I didn't really fuck with the breakfast that much. But, like... Like, that's the type of shit I think about when I think of him. I don't, you know, I understand, like, and I respect, you know, how far he went and how big he is. You know what I'm saying? I respect all that. But for me, it's just like, you know, he was one of my first friends that I felt like appreciated me for me. Yeah. You know. So you ended up living in that Pasadena house. I didn't live in the Pasadena house. But you stayed there a lot. I stayed there a lot. That was when I worked at Amazon. Uh, when I was working at Amazon delivering pieces at the same time, I got to a point where, um, like, I was just stressed, I guess, or something. But I was getting nosebleeds a lot. Like, it was weird. And uh, so, especially because, you know, it's nosebleed and shit. Like, the, the pizza place uh, put me on... Um, like on on hold I don't, what do you call it sick leave but you're probably not getting yeah, paid yeah yeah uh-uh. exactly some shit like that right so i was like okay and then i just stuck to amazon and i ended mm-hmm. up doing more amazon you know and it was what it was but um when i was working at amazon it was like i had four days right 10 hour shifts wow Four days of 10-hour shifts, and depending on what time of the year, if it was peak, meaning close to Christmas or whatever, then it's five days, 10-hour shifts. Whoa. You know what I mean? Mandatory. That's just how it was. You I get mean, paid more, I guess. Yeah, like you were... I was working 4.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. I mean, you're about like 19, 20. You're probably making some good bread for the time. Yeah, it was cool, bro. I Doing mean, 50-hour weeks? Yeah, four, I mean, 4.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. was a dream come true for me. I Like I said, I slept through school because I'm not a morning person, mm. and I can't sleep at night. Th- those two things don't go well together. You know what I mean? So I literally always slept through school. But when I finally got this job, as opposed to all the other jobs that I had or tried, it was like, well, I can sleep all day. I can wake up at 3.30 and go to work. Yeah. You know, like, I was okay with that. Like, I genuinely appreciated that. But, um, you know, the, the other three days of the week, I would basically, I think it was either Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday or something like that. Um, but the three days I was off in a row, I would be at that house. And I would hang out with, the Pasadena house was um, Craig, Peep, Ghost, Jay, uh, Brennan, of course. Brennan. It was his fucking house. Uh-huh. <laughs> fucking, and then you know, like I don't know who lived there and who didn't, but people like you would come in, or Wavy Jones, yeah, or Goth yeah. would come in, or right, uh, Lederick would right. be there. I don't right. know if they lived there, but you know they would come in and be there. I mean, I can't. It, it's such a <laughs> with SoundCloud, such a fine line of whether you live somewhere yeah, or not. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It is what it is. And I guess Ned. Yeah. Ned yeah. Arb. He was always there. But again, yeah. that was how I met Ned for the most part. I mean, I met him at like a show in um, Oakland or something like that. But even aside from that, um, that was how I met all those guys in person finally, you know? And it was through uh, Craig, actually, because I was close to Pete, right? And then, um, you know, he dropped uh, Star Shopping. Mm-hmm. So I remember the day it dropped. I was like, bro, this is a great song. And it did really well. And then he joined Schema. Hmm. And then once he joined Schema, though, he was more focused on that. In the beginning, he was more focused on that than, like, being able to have time for me to hang out with him or me to make music with him right. or me to talk to him, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? 
But oddly enough, as he goes in, Craig comes out. Not because of when, any not because of any drama. It's not related. Craig was in schema. A long time ago. Okay. A long time ago. So Jay Green's living at the house and Jay Green's the leader of schema. It's his thing. Right. So then after living there, Gus joins. And Eric was probably no, already no, Gus joined before he came to Pasadena. Uh, so okay, so Ghosty Peep, they're already in it. They yep. moved to Pasadena. Jay Green is living there too. Yeah, and, and Craig is living there. He had his own room. Right. Yeah. He's like one of the only people that had his own room. And that was after he left Schema. Like, you know, it was never hard feelings. That's what I'm trying to say. It wasn't weird like that. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, he left, but he still lived there. Like, we all hung out. But I'm saying, I, I ended up starting going to the house because of Craig. Because I met him because he had the little peep freestyle like a long, long, long time ago. Mm. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's my boy. I was like, what's up? You know, because early SoundCloud days, honestly, especially in 2015 and shit, before this whole cloud era and shit, everything was... It was really like that, bro. It was really like, hey, let me just hit you up. Let me just yeah. hit you up. Like, yeah. fucking, you know, that was back when Craig had 2,000 followers. Like, it was nothing. You know what I mean? But it was like, he was just so genuine. Yeah. He was genuine with me. And that's how we became really close. And he said, hey, come over to this house in Pasadena. This is where I live. And I came through. And then, you know, there's fucking like a ton of fucking people there. I'm like, oh, shit. I know all these guys. I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? But... You know, me and Craig used to kick it a lot back in the day. Yeah, one of the questions people wanted to know was, oh, you think you're ever going to make a song with Craig Zen? And I'm like, oh, my God. I have. Uh, we've made uh, right. multiple songs. You of know course, what I'm saying? of course. Yeah, we've made multiple songs. So yeah. are you guys still friends? Or are you friends with any of those people still? Uh, I say I'm friends with Craig. Oh, yeah. You know, definitely. Fucking we chat, chit-chat here and there every week or two or something like that. Just some bullshit okay you sick. know what i mean sick. but but aside from that i mean not super close to everybody end of the end of the living situation what are your fucking i got a little fucked over by a few people so right so from pasadena the house broke up most of the people if not well, we got we got a big from the pasadena house because we were too noisy right and yeah. punch holes in the walls i i wrote the article about that on Mask Girl, I dropped the white tea music know, video for the article so like two days before that happened. I think there's yeah. like that's that's part of the story. Craig, it's and, first time I seen you. Craig and Brennan walk in and they were talking about the place in Whittier. Yeah. So you end up in Whittier, and you were actually living in Whittier. I ended up living there because, um, just like at the Pasadena house, you know, working at Amazon, right? So this is a transition from job to, to full on music. You know, I was already making music like I had my music friends and this and that. But, um, you know, I would stay there for two or three days and just kick it. And they were like, and Craig one day was, you know, I guess he ran it by Brennan and Ghost or something. And, he, and then he told me, you know, we're sitting on the roof of the house. And he's like, you know, he's like, do you want to live here? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, he's like you know this much a month plus bills or whatever and i was like i don't know and then fucking i was like fuck it and i just went in and i quit my job that day <laughs> and i and i didn't even i didn't even tell my folks or nothing like i went i went by the house i grabbed all my shit and i was out because i was in between living at home away from home at home away from home i moved out for the first time i was 18 moved back in moved out when i was 19 Moved back Just in. like moving, staying with friends, kind of figuring shit out, then moving back home. Yeah, and yeah. But so California is expensive for 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 yeah. teens, bro. It really is. How long were you in that with your house? Mm, half a year to like nine months. Okay, so, I mean that's a little while. Yeah. And then what? Some drama unfolded. Yeah, you know you got that many fucking men in one house. Shit's gonna happen, right? So fucking. Uh, a lot of people I mean You know We've hung out For maybe about What 30 minutes 45 minutes Now it's like I'm really not an extra person I don't right. I don't like drama I don't deal with it I'll just do my thing You know what I'm saying Because I don't have time For that shit There were a lot In that situation There were some Conflicting personalities Going on There was on. a lot of Conflicting personalities Let's put it that on. way Definitely There were some high, en high energy people There were some Low energy people 
there were some loud people there were some quiet people yeah and it and it, it was what it was you know what i'm saying so it's like uh when all that shit was happening you know and everything hit the fan or whatever like people wanted to try to put me and tell me how i felt about certain things or you know what why don't you uh where were you with this fucking did you know this was gonna happen like how do you feel about that because i'm quiet right so you know people got to point the finger at somebody and it is what it is but it's like i mean i vaguely know what you're referencing was what like a fight broke out or something happened or some just something like that. We don't need to get into there, all the there, details. There were, That's not was, what this podcast is about. Conflict, but bro. right, something I saw, happened. I saw there was a so then conflict. you ended up leaving. No, I didn't end up leaving. Everybody else left, and they left me in the house by myself. And they turn off the electricity and they turn off the water. Were there two with your houses? No. So well, I mean, I when's mean, maybe, this? Maybe, like, maybe after I left after that, 2016. Yeah. Oh, 2016. like oh, so this is like what? At this point, it's like late 2016. Probably, yeah. Oh, close, close to Thanksgiving, okay. I think. So I mean, yeah, that's yeah. when like Brennan was still there and Ghost D Everybody, was there. Yeah, yeah okay. that was after. That was like right after Peep left because Peep had his own little thing. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Peep at that he point, got his Peep was living or something like that, that. Uh, downtown yeah. LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. A bunch of people went to live with so him, but Brennan was still there. Yeah, it was me, Brennan, Ghost, Craig. Smurf, Ned, I think at the right. time, and then Ned Wavy. ends up going to the loft. And yeah, exactly. Okay. That was when when all that shit started falling apart. You know, I was when everybody fucking you know started separating in that type of way. Right. So at that point, 2016, when all that's going on, your name is already you know rising. Right. That's, I mean, is that when we did the interview or did we do it last year in 2017? We did it in 2017, but... At that point, you're doing shows, you're getting yeah. paid. I'm sure rappers yeah. are paying you for features. Yeah, things are going a little better, you know? Right. And it's all started from, uh, you know, I quit my job in that Whittier house and I started selling shirts by the 15s, you know? Yeah, you I know, that's... 15, 20 shirts and... That's a really interesting you know. thing that, that I always noticed early on, and I assume it's session influenced is that merch has always it's, been it's, a big part of very your operation session influence, but even more than that and that's not to discredit them because it's very session influenced because they almost showed me that well maybe i can just do it too mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah. but um even then it was a drop dead influence very much because the way they do everything i realized how it had me hooked you know right. what I mean? It really inspired me because it's like they don't reprint anything. Everything mm -hmm. is a one time drop. And, you know, that's normal in the world of clothes. Right. right. But I didn't I was never into clothes like that. I never had clothes like that that I enjoyed. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, well, you know, let's just make it make it a thing. Let's make it. You know, what I mean, I try to everything I drop clothes wise. I try to drop it one time and one time only. And that's it, because then when you have it, it's, it's you know, it's a piece of time, too. You know, it's like, hey, I got this two or three years ago, you know right. what I mean? And it's just like, you can't recreate that. You can't change that. Yeah, I got to get your uh, shirt connect when we wrap this podcast because you got the print on this sleeve. You got the print on this sleeve. Oh, this is Kill Your God right here, bro. Kill Your God from New York, bro. He's he's great. Great. Fire. Yeah, fucking, I've been a fan of him since I was fucking nobody you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's it's like it's it's dope to be able to um finally meet and work with people that i've always looked up to you know what i'm saying yeah so i mean it feels like you've kind of more recently because how you also describe it you've kind of been in the background right. you're doing your thing you're living off of it but you're kind of in the background and ghost main blows up and little people right. blows up and Craig blows up in his own right. Right. But you're kind of in the background, this constant force chugging along. But right. it feels like more recently, I mean, even maybe over the past couple months, you've kind of really established yourself as your own. And it's yeah. it's like your time right now. And that's always been a goal, you know, uh, not even to be extra about it. It's just like, I, I want to be appreciated for me and my thoughts and my ideas. You know what I mean? And it's like, I, uh, like you're saying, I saw Pete go, I saw Craig go, I saw Ghost go, I saw them all, you know, do their thing. But, you know, and this isn't even disrespect. It just, the way they went about 
what they did they didn't they all did different things but the ways that they were doing things w- wouldn't be how i would do things in terms of a booking agent in terms and a of in, ter- in terms of whatever a booking agent a manager a label distribution right uh e- even even aside from that just 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 who, who you associate yourself with mm-hmm. you know and just simple things like that it, like for me it's like i don't want to i don't want to be known because i know you right you know what i mean that's why i'm not super straightforward like oh hey yeah i know this guy and that guy like fucking people would be surprised how many people i know right. honestly but it's like i don't want to be known because i know somebody else like i want you to know me because like you know me you listen to my music you stumbled upon my shit you appreciate my stuff or whatever like like that's that's all i want and that's that's cool you know i don't need the i don't need the other the extra so <clears throat> you and jay green have stayed close yeah was it last uh, summer we we ended up getting close i would say last year yeah and that's when you guys did your first tour yeah and the reason we did it either he called me i think he called me one night and he was just like bro like we gotta fucking do something and i was like you know i was like oh what do you want to do or some shit like that and he was like fucking he's like let's tour and i was like how are we gonna do it you know and we sat down and tried to figure everything out so what is that? You guys were emailing venues yourself and you routed that whole tour yourself? I booked everything. All right. Not everything. Mostly everything, though. Fucking uh, last city. Our uh, last tour was 28 cities. I booked 27 of them myself. Put the money up front myself. And that was just a couple months ago. Yeah. So what are, are, what are those like 200 capacity venues? What like whether it's the average cap uh, you're hitting it depends on the city very mm-hmm. right. really depends on the city like if you're in southern california it's going to be one way um if you're in virginia you know what i mean fucking surprisingly actually a lot of people come out of virginia yeah virginia yeah. beach shockers and shit yeah. like that's just tight but i'm saying you, you know everything fluctuates like some populations are literally more dense than others but it also changes venue price right and everything you know it's it's, it's a it's a it's its own little world like bro. some places you know socal you're playing in venues and somewhere in the midwest you might be playing in like, a bar. like an la show like our last la show with ham on everything with us headlining or me headlining or whatever it was 207 people that, wow. that paid to get in right and then there's like 300 okay, and more there's, people and then who, yeah. whoever on the guest list and whoever this and that yeah you know. ham has heavy guest lists. yeah i know yeah. fucking it's dope though i love it i fucking love adam shout, dude, out, adam. shout out adam and romo shout fucking, out fucking adam true the best legend. dudes thank god it's true them doing legend. it and not anyone else yeah, man. they fucking do shit the right way. And they do. They absolutely we're all do. Very they lucky always, to have. They them. always do, bro. And I fucking, you know, the longer I've been in this game, the more I respect people like Adam. The more I respect people like you. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? Because it's like you guys are the ones, bro, that, in a sense, are like me. And that's not to take away from it. You know what I'm saying? No. Or to include myself. But it's like you know, you're gonna do what you want to do and what you need to do. We all have the very same. DIY organic underground mentality yeah. that maybe some other people lost along the way. A lot, a lot of people lost it, especially in 2016, 2017. I like, I got sick of this scene last year, bro. Fucking, like, not even trying this. It's just fucking. It just got old, bro. I was like, what is all this? What is this? Yeah, you know, there's what the cloud goggles, the the, you know the. Man, I can't even start going in, bro. Yeah, the, that's a whole other. We can not, have a three-hour conversation off camera about where things have taken the wrong time. I mean, it, it's but fine. Where, right now, we're the DIY. writing the ship. We're writing the ship. Right. Where you know, so I mean, are there any other rappers that have come out recently that you like, or because that's because you're very vocal about your support of such Elder Boys? Are there right? Is there anyone else who you like or appreciate or you're a fan of or? Honestly, bro, like fucking, I listen to like myself a lot, obviously, because I mix and match my own shit. Right. So part of that co- goes into that. To be honest, I'm always working on. Well, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. This is what I'll do next album. This is what I'll do next time, you know. But I listen to pretty much such water boys, and that's it. Bones, Chris, Wolf, Eddie. That's literally like all I listen to for the most part. But at the same time, I have a lot of friends too. Like I said earlier, people I know since fifth, sixth grade, mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying we know we've known each other for so long. We're not 
all exactly the same, obviously. We're all friends. We've known each other for so long. So they always show me shit. I'm open to listen to anything, bro. And I enjoy a lot of the shit they show me. I enjoy a lot of the shit they show me. Fucking. I listen to all sorts of random bullshit. You'd be surprised. What's but, a few things? Uh, what you mean, rap wise or what? Or in general? Rap, rap wise, in general. You know, I don't. I try not to listen to as much like rock right now. I don't know. I'm just kind of going through a not rock phase right now. But fucking uh, wintertime is cool. Yeah. Uh, Low boat two. Really? It's got some good beats on it. Really? I like the production on it. Oh, you're saying his his production on Low? No, no. Two? I like I like uh, I like the songs too. Some of them fucking hoops boom. Like, I don't think that's something people would expect. No, nah, people, like, people, yeah, people wouldn't know what I listen to for right. shit. But it's like, you know, it for me, it depends, bro. It really does because that's why. That's why, I like, not that I'm hesitant to say it. Fucking, I listen to all sorts of shit. Do you feel? But as, at the same time, it's like I try my best to listen to genuine people, or at least like I feel like you're genuine. Yeah. You know. It's easy. It's easy for me to just cut somebody's music like that, bro, or cut somebody off. Do like, you feel like as you've nothing. gotten a little more successful in your own right, it's easier to listen to other people because you're not, you know, on the come up and you're angry not, and you're mad that you know I you're not you. as big as these other people? Is that? I've never felt that way. No? I really never have. Fucking, like, I've always been, um, you know. When Ghost started doing good, I was proud of Ghost. When when Craig started doing good, I was proud of Craig. When Peep started doing good, I was proud of Peep. Still am proud of all of them. I'll say that straight up. You know, uh, not friends with all of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Probably couldn't sit in a room with all of them. But fucking like, I'm not going to sit here and be fucking stupid about it be pretentious about it like you know i can appreciate uh the hustle in certain aspects yeah i can appreciate the work in certain aspects you know because that's what i'm trying to do for myself you know what i mean i mean it seems like it's working this last tour i saw the picture you guys got a springer van for the yeah. first time for the first time what was bro? it like a mercedes springer time. van yep so what was that like because you know, that's kind of a milestone like in the underground rapper's career so yeah. it's like, whoa, we're doing a tour and we have a nice van. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, we were sick of the, the other vans we were getting, the Fords, whatever, bro. Mm -hmm. Fucking no leg room. All these suitcases. You got like nine people in the van, so you got nine suitcases. Like, shit has to be accounted for, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that shit, just to pack it and unpack it is a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? So finally being able to afford that Sprinter van was really nice. And I know, you know, it, it made it a lot easier for all of us. Like everybody really appreciated yeah. that. And I think also you kind of get to, you know, you get to see that progress yeah, that it, you're making. It, you know uh, it seems nice. like a milestone. I mean, I, right. I still remember after Puya and Fat Nick did Unmasked in 2015, that next fall they toured. And I think there's a music video that they used the Sprinter van. in. I was like, holy shit, they have a Sprinter van? Like, this is crazy. Like, how'd this happen? Right. But yeah, it really is that progression from fucking touring in a friend's car to a van and a nice... Exactly. I used to... rack Mercedes the first couple tour, The first tour I ever did was in Texas with Ghost and Ned. And I fucking drove my Honda Civic all the way to Texas. Holy like, shit. You know what I mean? Like, fucking... Whatever is necessary. You know what I'm saying? So, something people bring up online, which I don't know how to feel about it one way or the other, it's kind of, it happens or it doesn't happen, is that with the openers on the tour, it's like they pay the, like, what, like, yeah. what's, like, I just don't know anything about touring in that regard. So, what's right. the story there? Because that's something that a bunch of kids ask. So, when we get openers on our tours, right now at least, I don't want to do it this way, and I wouldn't if I didn't have to, but truth is, and the simple fact is, I'm a fucking artist first. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to make music. I have to do this and that. You know what I'm saying? I'm booking 27 cities out of the 28. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have time to listen to submissions from 28 cities worth of local talent. Right. I really don't. 
because typically so me, it's not you, about the money it's about right. it's about look do you want this for yourself as an artist do you want this opportunity for yourself okay then just then take it mm-hmm. you know 50 bucks 100 bucks take take your opportunity take your you know what i'm saying it makes it easier on both of us because i really can't say i listen to what 10 artists in every city and that's really fucking undercutting it because i'm probably getting at least 30 50 artists in 28 cities because typically there's an agent who's kind of handling that whole process typically yeah right? exactly but you know i'm totally independent and no then, manager no label no booking agent nothing so then yeah. the artists are selling those tickets are they selling tickets nope because that's how when i was in new york growing up that's how it used to work yeah that's how it was when i was in bands too yeah. pre-sale yeah. tickets and shit like chain reaction shows it's and all like that shit. it's like you front 200 bucks and right. they give you 20 tickets and it's right. on you to sell them because right. you as an opener like trust me i'm gonna bring 20 people and like all right right here, exactly you and need that's, to buy and 20 that's, tickets, of course that's right? what everybody's gonna say right i'm gonna yeah. bring people like yeah. a, this is my city i'm gonna bring people mm-hmm. but it's like um no, we don't give them tickets, first of all, to make that super clear. And that, again, comes back to, okay, so if we book these openers in 28 cities, five openers per city, and we give them all tickets, you see how much more of a headache that is? Yeah. As an, as an independent person, you know? I'm I'm pulling into the city. I'm, I'm driving the fucking van, bro. I'm pulling in fucking... You know, to every show, like hopefully an hour or two hours before the show. Fucking, I don't have time to chase everybody down and and ask, yeah. uh, do you have this? Do you have that? You know what I mean? Like, like I'm saying, it's not about the money. It's about like, if we're doing a show in in this city, you know what I mean? People are coming and expecting to see us. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I want people to have the opportunity to be seen. So that's what I'm trying to say is you take that opportunity to be seen, you know what I'm saying, in front of maybe a crowd that isn't fully yours. Right. Like in front I mean, of, in front it of just some seems of like people, the reality of, of DIY KB's people. underground tours. It just seems like when I was growing up, that's how it went. And I mean, I don't really have a strong opinion on it one way or I'm the saying, other, but that's just like how it's, that's just how it goes. S- simple example, bro. You go to Dallas, Texas. Okay. I pay a thousand dollars for the venue, right? Right, and then so it's me and me and some people doing the thing. We can make some of the money back on tickets. Obviously, we can make some money back on merch. Obviously, but it's like this show isn't free. You know what I mean? It's not free for me either. And like, I don't. I don't Dallas know if we're getting. And you have to stay somewhere overnight. Exactly. In you, have this, you have to get an Airbnb. So then all of a the, sudden, fifteen hundred dollars or seventeen hundred dollars. The van was a ten grand rental. You know. What I'm and saying? you want to keep ticket sales low and say, you so know, have more people come through. Say like a hundred kids come and tickets are ten bucks. Right. That's only a thousand dollars. So then there's all this extra money that needs to be accounted yeah, that, for. Yeah, and that's just that's just breaking even exactly. Right. And there's you know what I'm saying so it's not like it's not like we're out here fucking like trying to hoe people or nothing like that bro it's just like i don't have time to listen to everything all these submissions this and that like do you want to be here or not like i don't sit there and cry about fucking uh we have uh uh two more spots left if anybody no. wants to no nah, i'm not i'm not really too opposed to it like because that. here's why if kids are willing to pay for soundcloud repost and some kids pay like a hundred dollars for a soundcloud repost yeah. it's like all right whatever but anyway not to get completely fucking derailed on no, that topic. I get you. I get you. But the tour was successful. You guys did 28 cool. cities. 20 and you cities. just wrapped it up a month or two ago. Yeah. Wrapped up literally like a month and three days Who was ago. it? You, Jay Green, Cold Blooded. Me, Jay Green, and Cold Blooded. Uh, as the, you know, we've always been the core of Doubt Me Now. Um, because that's who I've done it with since the beginning. Doubt Me Now 1, 2, and 3 it was with Jay and me and KB. Hmm. Domino 2 is with Roz as well uh, You know 1 and 2 We had Free Will come with us Fucking This last tour we had Sigil Nautis Torch Face uh, Last Tax Well a couple mem- A couple members from Last Tax Amec and Filthy You know what I mean It's like It's hard to say It's not all planned bro It's really not yeah. and it's, it's not something that like I'm like I've been saying, it's not something that I like to put a lot of attention towards. I don't have time for that shit. It's like, hey, are you in or are you out? Do you want this? Or do you not? You know what I mean? Because 
like that's how it goes for me fucking before before day one of the tour you know what i'm saying the van's 10 grand Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Before day one. Right. Like, I, I don't expect, I don't know what I'm getting. I booked 28 cities, okay? 27 cities. Fucking, I pay for every single venue up front. You know, at least half. I mean, every venue is a little different with how they handle shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not like fucking, we're not millionaires from a tour. You know what I mean? But it's so nice to be able to travel. We did make money. You know what I'm saying? We did come out positive, you know, which is great. But it's so nice to be able to travel fucking comfortably, see people that I seen on the first one, the second one, you know what I mean? Meet new people and like like it's dope. Travel, see the country a little bit, it's cool. Fucking but the money is like all the money I actually make, it's, it doesn't come from touring, honestly. Right, it comes from merch. And- it comes from merch, it comes from my website for clothes, it comes from music streams. You're on Spotify and Apple Music. Right. Are you on iTunes or that's no, I don't sell on? music. I only put my show on Spotify and uh, Apple Music for convenience, mm-hmm. but I don't sell music for a dollar amount. I don't believe in that because of like when I was a kid, I used LimeWire all the time for everything. Yeah, same. Everything. You know, I mean, I always downloaded music as a kid, always downloaded music for free. And it's not like, I'm not saying that like that's cool or whatever, but I'm saying because I always downloaded music for free. I want to give people my music like as a download right. or as a convenience. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I can't be a hypocrite, download my shit for free, right? When I was a kid and shit, and then go sell music. Yeah. Like, I, I would feel... Do you do physical releases? I've had, I've had one little cassette release, like, for fun, that I gave yeah. away for free with shirts. Okay. But that was it. I don't do physicals. Is that I want something to. you're planning on? Yeah, is that something it, it would be nice to do future? like a, a vinyl or something. Yeah, I do a vinyl. A vinyl, a vinyl be t- would be I mean, dope. because then there's a tangible. I mean, I think people should be able to sell whatever they want. Because you can really collect it, digital, though. You but can yeah, really that's, have it. You know, exactly. that's what the cassettes thing. were. Like, I know not everybody yeah. has a cassette player, yeah. but it's like, hey, you got this little, like, it looks nice, you know. It's nice to, like you're saying, tangible to be able to hold it. Yeah. Make it real. Yeah. So, um... What do you think? What's like, you know, we're gearing up for the end of 2018. Right. What's the future hold? Uh, I'm getting a motorcycle in two weeks. Um, wow. What kind of motorcycle? I want to get a Honda CBR. I'm not too good on motorcycles, but... Uh, me either, to be honest. I'm just, I'm about to learn and all Have that. Have you ever ridden a motorcycle before? Nope. You're going to buy it and then you're going to get your motorcycle license with that motorcycle. Yep. Yeah. That's going to be sick. That's what I want to do. I mean, other than that, I'm trying to move again. Yeah, so what are you doing now? Are, are you living with Jay Green or? No, nah, no, nah, I don't live with no rappers. <laughs> you just no. live with like friends. Yeah, trust me, after last time, bro. Oh, fucking, right. uh, yeah. I literally haven't even done a feature with a rapper in about two years. Wow. Since that happened or whatever. Right, you know, whatever, like yeah. I haven't, uh, so seeing Velveteers I've done feature with, you know, female singers. Yeah, yeah. Not to, not to take away, or, you know what I'm saying, downplay it because I, no, but I mean, love it's, their music. But it's, it's just like, a very different, it's different yeah, from having back in the day, I, used, I did then, songs with Craig, I did songs yeah. with Ghost, I did songs with him, them, you know what I'm saying? Like, but like, I just got so over like dealing with that type of shit. Like, not even not even that it's like that serious but it's like uh it just seems like the littlest drama can lead to the biggest issue and people switch uh, up and it just seems and like, then it's yeah, like it's a, and then it's like all this time invested for what you know so it's like i i really just i've been focused on myself too because it helps it helps me really stay clear and stay true and and you know like i was saying earlier like i want to be known for me right you know at, the, at least in the beginning of it i want to start doing features again this year before it's over though i want to start trying to reach out to people and start making music people because it's been is there anyone you have a in long mind time my friends nobody okay. would probably know them off tops to be honest but people i've known my whole life so recording more music maybe some features you get in a motorcycle yeah. and they get a new place and it looks like you got some fresh ink got a, got a couple 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 bad boys mm. fucking i did the elbow yesterday yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the camera should be able to pick it up. Can oh. you, like, raise your sleeve a little bit? It doesn't go all the way up. Holy. So working on it. Was there something it's under there on. already? or uh, It was all clean. I'm doing it black all the way up to the shoulder. 
it takes a lot of little sessions of just straight shading. You know what I mean? So it takes forever. I've probably done at least 18 hours on it so far. Holy sh on just that? On just on just here to here, like about 18 hours. I don't have any tattoos, so I have no idea what the process is, but does I mean, it hurt? Honestly, I mean, is it, has it just going it, dumb it should, after it a while? It shouldn't have necessarily taken that long, but it's like there's set up, tear down, and like I do it at my friend's house. Oh, like, okay. like I met him through somebody, like, and he's cool as fuck. He has his own outside the house they built a separate house and they have a separate studio for tattooing it's oh like that's really, crazy it's actually really professional it's really clean and shit so like it's that. like underground yeah tattooing. It's, he's he's a diy guy he's a diy guy too. i love supporting diy people bro and you said was it that that's for your mom who passed away or the yeah, skull or is, what that yeah. this is for this is for my mom is supposed to represent the uh the time you know the pain it's supposed to you know it's supposed to be something that we could share, you know, even though she's not here anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it, wow. it's, it's hard to fully explain it, but like while I'm getting the tattoo and just sitting there under the needle, it's just like, like every moment, like I can think of her, you know what I mean? And it's like, I know that this is for her and I know that, you know what I mean? It's not her name. It's not, um, um, not, not to disrespect or, you know, hate on anybody that ever does that. You know, it's not her name. It's not a date. But this is for me. Like, and I'll always know what this means. Like, to anybody else, it's nothing. Hmm. You know what I mean? To everybody else, it's nothing. But to me, like, this is important. You know what I mean? And I have to finish it. Like, it hurts. It really does. But I have to finish it. So it's going up to the... To the shoulder. To the shoulder. Yeah. Damn, dude. That's fucking And then beautiful. I might do white on top of it. But I don't know. Really? Yet. Oh, Maybe. shit. And Maybe. Do, you, do you have any other tattoos? It looks like that arm's pretty bare. Yeah, this uh, this arm is supposed to be about death, which is I think easier to understand. This arm is supposed to be about life. Mm. I feel like I don't understand it fully yet, so I haven't started. I, I don't want to be ignorant. You know, I want to understand what's really important. So I'm trying to save it till I really understand what's important. Damn, that's sick. Yeah, heavy. But this one's all done. <laughs> <For the most laughs> yeah, part. it looks like you're running out of space and it's going to be filled up in right a now. couple months. So it's a, like, you know, you got a big few months ahead of you finishing up that tattoo, moving, motorcycle, getting the motorcycle license, maybe some features. Yeah, let's see what's up. <laughs> maybe a license. Maybe I forgot some I had to get a license. Maybe. Fuck. That's like, apparently it's easy. You just go to a couple, oh, sure. you just go to like a couple classes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll figure that shit out. It can't be that difficult. Yeah. It's like riding a bike, but you're going hundred miles an hour. It's like riding a bike, but it's big. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My uncle actually used to drag race motorcycles. Uh, really? One thing that inspires me. Yeah. I used to watch him. He he used to go like 280 on these fucking things. Dude's like. And other ones that have the big, two. long metal thing on the back. So they don't like flip yeah. over. Holy shit. Yeah where out here uh fucking i can't even remember where it was dude it was like the most random like fourth of july ever fucking um we went to go see him and he's just fucking you know it's just big parking lot obviously drag strip and you know you just do like sessions you know like every hour or two or three you're up you know what i mean so it's like yeah that's so crazy yeah, it is. It is actually really weird to me because it's like uh, so much waiting for like literally like a 14 second yeah. <laughs> ride, you know? Is he still around? Yeah. Oh, you can just have him show you how the fucking... Huh. He can easily teach you. Yeah, he could teach me. Fucking, I don't know. I'm a really independent person. Yeah. Fucking, I don't ask anybody for anything. Fucking, not even my own family. That's just how I am. Yeah. It's easier for me, my peace of mind, you know? So let me ask something of you, yeah. for you. Is yeah. there anything I missed? Uh, I'm just here talking, dude. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there any topics we should have hit on? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I don't even know what the hell we're supposed to talk about. Me either. That's the thing. What the fuck are we supposed to talk about? But, I, you know, I think it's a pretty good podcast. Yeah, I mean, I don't do this often, so I think it's cool. Seems like it was, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half. Word. It was great. Dude, well, thank you for coming. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you coming out here from the undesignated area that you live in. That's right. Um, everyone, follow Omen. Please. X, I, I, I. That's three of them. Twitter. Instagram. All that. YouTube. 
SoundCloud. Everything. I mean, Fo- just Google. Yeah, just search Google. Follow Mascarilla and all those places. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you are watching this or subscribe on iTunes or Please. Spotify. The podcasts are on Spotify. I don't know what you Which do on dope. Spotify. Yeah. I don't think you subscribe on Spotify, but they're on Spotify and wherever else you consume podcasts. 